Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Samantha and I make videos on intentional living. And today I'm going to discuss with you how I did on my course of one goals. So at the beginning of this year, I published a video where I talked about setting some goals for quarter one, so January, February, March. The reason why I did that is because I was experiencing a lot of overwhelm in my life and I still am, to be frank. I have a lot of responsibilities and I just wasn't able to juggle all my priorities. So I thought maybe goal setting and holding myself accountable on this channel might help me. So let's go through what I wrote down on my quarter one goals. So I had four main goals. The first one was to publish weekly on this channel. The second one was to create a series of geography videos on my main channel. The third one was to lose some weight. And the fourth one was to find Jasmine, who's my one year old, and Annie for her childcare. So the way I'm gonna structure this video is I'm going to go through each of the goals first and discuss how I did. And then I'm going to talk through my longer term goals. The longer term goals are my one year goals that I set also. And then we're going to make any adjustments that we need and then and finally, I'm going to set out some quarter two goals. So let's start with my first goal, which was to publish weekly on this channel. And as you can see, I have been doing that pretty consistently. Now, it's not been easy. Finding any kind of time in my schedule has been a real negotiation. And I'm not gonna lie, posting on this video has taken time away from other projects and other things that I want to do. And sometimes it's pretty hard to justify putting in all this time and effort into this channel. As you know, I'm a very small YouTuber. I make no money from it. The only reason why I do it is that I find it fun, I find it enjoyable, it gives me a connection to a lot of different people who have the same interests as me, things that I can discuss on here that I perhaps may not be really able to discuss so much with the people in my life in real life. So the way I justify keeping up this channel is because I enjoy it and for now it's justification enough but I have to say it has been a lot of effort to make sure that I continue posting every week on this channel. So I have a couple of questions for you guys. How important is it to you that I post consistently on this channel? Now I know a lot of big YouTubers talk about how important consistency is, but considering the size of my channel, I don't know whether you know the same rules apply to me. I watch people who post quite sporadically. I may not watch them straight away when they release a new video, but I will go and ferret them out. So it's just interesting to me to know how um, you guys feel about it. And also, I'm not really trying to grow this channel too much. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, I would love for this channel to grow, but it's not a super intense focus of mine because I do think that that can be quite detrimental when you're on YouTube because a lot of things about whether your channel grows or not is outside side of your control. So I have quite a small audience. I think about 100 to 200 people watch my videos. So yeah, my question is how important is it to you that I post consistently? I will be posting consistently. I still plan to post once a week, but I just wanted to know um, how big a deal it was for you guys. My second question is what kind of content would you like to see me post? There's a lot of wind noise by the way, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry, it's a very windy day. So back to my point, what kind of content would you like to see me post? I obviously do a lot of minimalism content and intentional living content, which I still want to do, but I don't want to niche down too hard and just do minimalism content. So anything under the intentional living content umbrella would be really, really good. So suggestions under that is what I'm really after. Also, would you like to see reset days, productivity days, um, morning routines, night routines, vlogs? With regards to vlogs, it's not going to be super aesthetic or uh, very, very polished as you might see on YouTube. I think I live a pretty good life. We have a nice home and we have a solid routine, but it is quite real. So for example, dinner can sometimes be late. Sometimes we forget to buy milk for Jasmine. Sometimes my room gets really, really messy. Are these things that you'd like to see? So just give me your thoughts on the matter. What would you like to see? So with regards to the first goal, I've definitely done it. My second goal was to create a series of geography videos for my main channel. Now to quickly recap, my main channel is called London City Girl. It's part of a very small social media business that I run. I do make money from it, so it is very important that I do post regularly on that channel. However, because I make educational content on that channel, it can sometimes take months, if not years, to post 
on that channel. And that's why I really like this channel that I post on right now because I'm able to post much more frequently and have that connection with my audience. So with regards to the geography videos, there are seven videos in the series and I've only managed to complete one and that's not even published. The reason why that's not published is all seven are quite linked together because I will be publishing an ebook at the same time. So I need to really get all of them completed and in the can before I start scheduling them out. Now I've really tried to make my geography videos happen and in February I was getting really frustrated that I couldn't find time and I started to take my frustrations out on the people close to me and I realised that I was just putting way too much pressure on myself and I really needed to push that goal out into the longer term so I need to put that in as a quarter two goal. I think it was far too ambitious trying to relaunch this vlog channel and also create seven pretty detailed videos for my main channel at the same time. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to achieve this goal this quarter, but I'm moving it into quarter two. So my next goal was to lose between two to five kilos in the first three months of the year. And I have great news. I've actually managed to do that. To give you a brief summary, I gained approximately 20 kilos across my pregnancy and also I had a birth injury which meant that I was unable to walk for an entire year and within that birth injury I also gained some weight. So overall I gained 20 kilos if not more. So my goal was to get back to as close to my pre-baby weight as I could and at the beginning of January I think I weighed around 79.2 kilos. In fact I suspect I weighed a little bit more than that but I was too scared to jump on the scales to take my weight but the last recorded weight that I have that I've got footage of I was 79.2 kilos and I just took my weight a couple of days ago for this video and currently I'm 73.8 kilos so that's a total loss of 5.4 kilograms and I'm so proud of myself I did not expect to lose so much weight in such a short amount of time and I think I've done really really well now the reason for me being able to lose so much weight so rapidly is because of the amount of movement I'm doing. As a new mum, oh my goodness, the amount you have to move is crazy. You're carrying your baby around, you're bending down to do nappy changes, you're running to the shop because you forgot to buy her something. So it's constant movement. I started being able to walk in October and after that my progress in terms of my recovery was pretty rapid and I've been moving, I would say, constantly from about November but onwards because we have a nanny I am able to have structured exercise on top of that I work out five days a week for an hour on my treadmill I bought myself a treadmill and obviously I have bought childcare so I've spent a lot of money making sure that I set myself up for success on this weight loss journey and I think that that's something to acknowledge and to talk about what a privilege it really is. Now I'm not saying that anybody who wants to lose weight needs to buy themselves an expensive treadmill or to get themselves a nanny. I'm sure you can lose weight other ways. I definitely have done in the past. However, under the current circumstances, this has allowed me to set myself up for success and I didn't not want to acknowledge that because it drives me crazy when people on social media and celebrities pretend that everything's super easy, that they lost weight super easily and that they don't have nannies and they don't have additional help and they don't have chefs and all of these things to make it much, much easier for them. I just want to acknowledge my privilege and not go on my merry way and pretend that all of this stuff is easy for everybody. I also wanna say, in regards to my weight, I know that that's not the only measure of health and fitness. It just acts as a very rough guide for myself. I do still have quite a lot of weight to lose and I wanna make sure that what I'm doing is working. In terms of food, I've not really restricted my food at all. The one area of restriction is that I don't really have as many takeaways as I was having when I was on with my birth injury we were having takeaways maybe multiple times a week because that was the only thing that I could really enjoy that was the only thing that I could really partake in I don't resent that time in my life at all I have I think a very good relationship with food having been overweight for most of my younger life I'm quite at peace with how I used to look I'm quite at peace with um, how I look right now I don't have a lot of hang-ups when I talk about weight in fact I find it quite enjoyable to talk about health and fitness and I do think it takes a lot of time and dedication to make sure that you know you're doing the best for yourself and it's something that is a bit of a passion of mine so if you ever want any videos on that kind of stuff I'll be more than happy to do it I think 
probably let's just wait until I've lost the weight. I don't want to put more pressure on myself right now. But if it's something that you guys are interested in the future, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. So this goal can be ticked off. And my last goal for quarter one was to find a nanny for Jasmine. And oh my goodness, it was so intimidating to find her right at the beginning. I didn't know what I was doing. I ended up going with an agency called Koru. They are slightly more expensive than if you were to employ a nanny directly. However, they take care of all the paperwork. They make sure your nanny is DBS checked and they also make sure that she is first aid trained. And I absolutely love our nanny. I'm not gonna say her name here for privacy purposes, but she has been amazing. I love the one-on-one -on -one attention that Jasmine gets. I'm really, really happy with our current childcare arrangement. In the future, Jasmine may go to nursery, but right now, this part-time nanny works brilliantly for us. So let's quickly revisit my long-term goals. The first one was to get back to my pre-baby weight. Now I think I'm going to rephrase that a little and say that I want to continue on my health and fitness journey. I don't want to put pressure on myself and say I definitely need to get back to my pre-baby weight, which was 57 kilos by the way. Actually, I think it might have been 60 kilos. I feel my best at 57 kilos, so if I were to get back to that point, I would have to lose 16.8 kilos. I think that's a little bit too ambitious for one year. So I just want to say keep going in terms of health and fitness. I think with um, weight loss journeys, you shouldn't pressurize yourself too much. Back in the day, I would want to lose weight so, so quickly, but having not been able to walk for an entire year, time for me now feels very, very different. So let's move on to the next goal because I've talked about my weight loss quite a lot in this video. My next goal was to get my bottom teeth straightened and it's not going to happen. It's going to be way too expensive. I'm spending so much money on childcare and rent that I don't have thousands of additional pounds to spend on getting my teeth straightened. If you've been following my budget videos, you'll know that I'm struggling to come to terms with how much my outgoings are at the moment. I've always been very frugal. I've always been able to save a lot of money, but right now I'm not able to do that. So spending hundreds more on my teeth is really not going to happen right now. My next goal was to restart my Instagram and to be honest with you guys, I have no idea how this ended up becoming a goal of mine. I'm not that into Instagram, to be honest with you. I think before I was prepping for my goals video, I must have been watching the goals of other people and that must have been in other people's videos and I thought, oh, maybe I should make that a goal. But yeah, I'm not going to make that a goal. If I do post on Instagram, that's great, but it definitely doesn't merit being a goal. If I do lose weight and I'm able to fit back into my older clothes, then I might start a project where I basically shop my closet and I show you all the outfits that I can make with all the items that I own. I've actually got two videos on this channel that goes through my wardrobe. I created a minimalist wardrobe tour of what I currently wear and I've also got an older video of the clothes that I was able to wear before I had my baby. I still have those clothes so they're in storage and I plan to fit back into them. Once I'm able to fit back into them, with those clothes and my current clothes, I will have nearly 100 pieces of clothing and I should be able to make 365 outfits, I'm pretty sure. So I might do a project like that where I post everything that I'm able to create through my existing wardrobe. I think that would be pretty fun, but that's some distance away. So my next long-term goal was to learn how to cook and that actually went up in the pecking order in terms of priority and I did spend quite a bit of time learning how to cook this quarter. Obviously, there's still a long way to go, but I am able to make simple curries for myself. My mum was away for the last couple of months, so necessity meant that I had to learn how to cook. I'm able to make curries, as I said, so my lunch is pretty similar every day. I have vegetable curry, some rice, and a meat or fish curry. The way my sister and I divided up the cooking was that I did the vegetable curries. Um, whoever saw that rice needed to be made made the rice and she did the chicken, fish and uh, egg curries and it worked out pretty well. I'm still on the hunt to find more recipes and foods that Jasmine will enjoy. There's a pasta dish that I make that she really, really likes, but I'd love to add more recipes and dishes into my repertoire. My goal is to get 10 dishes that I know that she really, really likes, and my plan is to rotate them across the month. I have been speaking for so long now, my voice is getting a bit tired, so let's move on to my quarter two goals. 
Well, the first one is to continue posting regularly on this channel. I don't think if I didn't make it a goal that I would continue to do this, to be honest with you. I think making it a goal really forces me to prioritize it. The second goal is to make sure that I complete my geography videos. It really needs to be of high importance this quarter. I know that I'll feel so proud of myself if I get those videos published. The third goal is to lose between two to five kilos again for quarter two. And my fourth goal will be to continue to learn how to cook for Jasmine and find more dishes that she likes. I think that's plenty to be honest with you. Going by how my quarter one went, I know that all of these goals will keep me pretty occupied for the next three months. What I'll do then is come back on here in July and let you know how I got on. So in terms of long-term goals, the adjustments are I want to continue on my health and fitness journey. I am getting rid of teeth straightening. I'm getting rid of Instagram. I want to post more on my main channel and I want to continue to learn how to cook. I think all of that is going to be a lot of work, but just about manageable for me. I'm really liking making these videos. I think I've done pretty well. I'm pretty proud of myself. And I was pretty down on myself actually before I made this video. I was thinking, oh, you know, everything takes so long. I haven't done this, I haven't done that. But then reviewing my goals, I've done pretty well to be honest with you. There's only one thing that I didn't do. That was the geography stuff. And that is going to be a real priority this quarter. So I hope and I am confident that I will get that done this quarter. So guys, I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. I think I've covered pretty much everything. I hope you enjoyed this goal review and goal setting exercise. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye.